Hi, I'm GM Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video in which AlphaZero breathes life into a G3 Grunfeld. AlphaZero is playing on the black side of the Grunfeld and generates an attack which it then turns into a fine strategic win. It's a very great game. The game is reminiscent of a famous Kasparov win against Anand from Geneva in 1996. In that game, it was Kasparov was on the black side of a Nidorf Sicilian and Kasparov adopted the same advanced pawn structure for black, pushing his pawn all the way up to h3, the same that Alpha Zero used. Yeah, it's a really wonderful game, this one, so uh, let's get into it. Welcome back. We're now going to take a look at this game between Stockfish with white and Alpha Zero as black. This is a brand new game and it's in the Grunfeld. You probably won't have seen it at all before because it wasn't in Game Changer and it hasn't previously been published. Exactly, let's take a look at it then. So we start off with knight f3, knight f6, d4 and g6. And here um, Stockfish decides to play g3 which is the uh, um, well, a very solid variation against either the King's Indian or the Grunfeld into which uh, Alpha Zero transposes here. d5, takes castles. So uh, I remember John Nunn, uh, the great English Grandmaster at the um, um, 1997 World Teams Championship, telling me uh, before the game that uh, um, his opponent played this line with white and that he'd had uh, 30 games with it before and he'd drawn 29 of them. And he, uh, he then proceeded to draw that one as well, which wasn't uh, too big of a surprise to us. It's a very solid variation. Um, Alpha Zero well, play some uh, some interesting stuff here. Alpha Zero wants to liven things up. Yeah, that's right. So it plays some, some slightly unusual moves here. Bishop f5 uh, isn't the main um, um, move, and nor is knight d7. Uh, but actually, Alpha Zero goes into this sort of typical pawn structure. Um, so here, blacks c6 and d5 are restricting the light squared, white light squared bishop. However, white would maybe consider that it has a slight advantage here. Yeah, I mean the um, the dark squares, black's dark squares are quite um, are quite weak. You could say there's um, you know quite a few um, weak dark squares around the c6 and d5 pawns. There's a nice square on c5 for white to blockade. Um, so here, alpha zero takes um, well quite a, a typical though quite radical decision. Um, it plays the move. 15, h5. We all knew it was coming, a typical alpha zero type move. This is a novelty in this position, so it's not been played in over the board, nor correspondence chess in exactly this position. There was a similar correspondence game um, in, in a, a slightly different position where h5 was played. Um, the execution of the plan in that particular game was less impressive than Alpha Zero's. Yeah, this is um, this is a, a very impressive game from Alpha Zero. So, um, Stockfish reacts with Rook D one, H four, and then this move Bishop G five, which is quite good actually. Um, so attacking the Queen on D eight and the Pawn on H four. So Black replies uh, F six. So uh, Black has been forced to create a weakness here. Um, However, Black's got counterplay uh, with its h pawn and attack. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's it's a tough struggle. Um, I mean, so White's uh, um, Black's reaching out to try and do something, and White's exploiting that to uh, to pick off some weaknesses. Um, this move f six, um, obviously, Bishop takes h four is impossible because of uh, of g five trapping the bishop, and um, well, this move f six it blocks the bishop on g seven opens the second rank and also yeah this a2 g8 diagonal towards the king feels a little bit airy as well so you know there's all sorts of weaknesses but it does give um alpha zero a tempo to achieve its plan and uh h3 is a very typical alpha zero move cramping the white king exactly and um and white also has to decide where's this bishop going to retreat is it going to go to h1 or to f1 i mean h1 this bishop's still restricted by these pawns on c6 and d5 so um stockfish puts the bishop on f1 um which is uh quite decent but it does weaken the the control of the f3 square you know so uh it's uh swings and roundabouts really position very sharp and uh you know certainly alpha zero has put a, a quite a bit of life into it with this uh sharp push of the h pawn to h3 
And now uh, AlphaZero played this move, Bishop F8. Um, very typical uh, from AlphaZero. We notice it time and time again, if there's a, an inactive piece and that bishop on g7 is uh, rather blocked by the pawn on f6, and AlphaZero straight away tries to uh, to activate it. And this bishop is, um, well, aiming for some of the weakened dark squares this time on the queen side that, uh, that white weakened with the move b3. And, um, and here um, Stockfish takes um, well, quite a radical decision. Yes, yeah, Stockfish changes the style of the game here and exchanges off its dark squared bishop for black's knight. So it does give black the bishop pair and you'll see that being used to excellent effect later in the game. So it was originally uh, Stockfish controlling, uh, sorry, Alpha Zero as black controlling all the light squares. Uh, now Stockfish has given away some of the dark square control to be able to challenge on the light squares. Yeah, it's it's um so it's uh, you can really see it's you know real clash uh, of uh, of uh, of styles and real clash of uh, of plans here because uh, um after rook e5 stockfish has seen this move which is e4 which is um very very um uh, sharp um d takes e4 um would allow queen takes d8 and bishop takes e4 would allow knight e4 rook e4 rook c6 and black's position collapses i mean even the this bold pawn on h3 will be going because it's no longer protected. So, um, yeah, it's really, you know, making the position very, very sharp. But alpha zero's got, um, its reply. Bishop g4, rook e1, bishop a3. So a couple of developing and, um, um, I suppose you say irritating moves just to, uh, to knock white's pieces off their favorite squares. And then this move d4, just, uh, knight a4 and king g7. That's another very typical alpha zero move, tucking the king away to safety. Look at that d pawn now. It's uh, very nice having a passed d pawn right in the middle of the board. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, you can really see now that that uh, that alpha zero has got quite a lot of control of dark squares now. But on the other hand, you can see some uh, some nice spots on light squares for white to put the pieces. Now, Stockfish played um, quite a, a, a clever uh, little tactical idea here. Played f three. So black can't take that pawn. If black takes on f3, white can put the queen up to d3. And there's a little sting in that move in that white can next follow up with b4 and the bishop on a3 is stuck. Yeah, it's a typical uh, typical clever stockfish tactic. And uh, this move f3 sort of repairs the, the light squares even further, you know, by uh, by establishing a pawn on a, on a key light square. So, um, yeah, Alpha Zero retreated and then Stockfish played this move, Queen F2. Here, Black played a very calm move. Um, we've already seen that that D pawn looks quite impressive, but Alpha Zero chose to just give it up. Yeah, Queen E7 was played, completely nonchalant, giving up that D pawn. It's, um, uh, yeah, it's an amazing move. And actually, I think from now on, you can really say that uh, Alpha Zero's play is, 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 Absolutely of the highest class. Quite amazing what uh, what it comes up with. Um, what Alpha Zero does always like is having open lines and open diagonals. And here, once the D pawn's been taken, the D file is open, and also that very important diagonal from G one up to A seven. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, you, you can. Um, I don't think it's a bad decision for White to take the pawn, but it certainly gives uh, Alpha Zero the play that it uh, that, that it really likes. I mean, Stockfish took this pawn on d4, uh, Rook d8, Queen e3, um, and then this move Rook a5. Uh, we're threatening Rook takes a4, uh, followed by Bishop c5. So um, Stockfish put the king to h1. And this is a feature of quite a few Alpha Zero and stockfish games where that king is stuck right in the corner on h1 and there's a pawn on h3 keeping it on the back rank yeah i mean this um um this this pawn on h3 has become doubly important now now that the king has been chased to h1 but still you know still for for all that brilliant play you know it's it's not clear quite how um um how zero is going to proceed but if you just look at the position and you just see what's what's happened in the position uh first of all the white king's got um uh, pinned down to the corner uh on h1 by this pawn on h3 um secondly that knight on, on a4 is kind of stuck um i mean it might want to, to really to, to come around to c4 you know to get to redeploy to a better square but it has to keep control of the c5 square, otherwise black's bishop will move there. 
Um, and, um, well, I mean, Black's got uh, some control of the D file. You know, there's a lot of activity in there, but, you know, how to find, uh, how to really keep on uh, shaking the foundations of White's position and making it weaker. Um, well, Alpha Zero finds a fantastic move here. G5. And yeah, um, I think you can guess where that pawn is going. <laughs> it's going to keep on going. It's going to keep on going. So Rook D1 and now G4. And this is a bit like the Kasparov game that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's one we mentioned in the introduction. I'll flash up a couple of diagrams so you can see. But it really reminded me of what uh, Kasparov did in that brilliant game against uh, Vichy Anand at Geneva 1996. Really using those kingside pawns to, uh, to um, well, to both to constrict and also to break open the opponent's kingside. So this is, um, uh, well, a very crucial moment, um, um, very, very difficult for um, uh, for White to choose a, a good path without weakening himself more. Um, Stockfish played this move bishop e2, which looks quite reasonable. Um, just um, to give you one idea of um, of what can happen, I mean, for example, if you played f4, which looks quite reasonable, you know, trying to keep your, uh, your pawns intact, then Black can actually play this lovely move rook ad5. Because e takes d5 would allow bishop takes d5, check, and the queen is hanging. Um, so white would probably have to play something like uh, rook d5, for example. But then after c takes d5, you know, black's carrying on opening up the, um, uh, the, the king side and in particular this long a8 h1 diagonal towards the king. So, yeah, I mean, what Stockfish tries to do is very sensible, just tries to... Uh, um, keep the position closed together, pawn on e4, protect that with the bishop. So rook e8, um, black steps off the open line uh, because, well, this pawn on e4 is going to be weak, so black's targeting that. Queen f4, now a, a, a fantastic move again. f5, just, um, I mean, really, I mean, when you consider this is, you know, an exchange g3 Grunfeld, which is one of the yeah, most solid and most now yeah, boring, you might say, uh, opening variations. And uh, l you know, look what look at what Alpha Zero has done here. Um, so um, Stockfish took on G four here, and um, Alpha Zero considered this Wait, to be a uh, Stockfish would take on F five. You just take back with the rook, with a rook, or even with a bishop. Yeah, both are very strong. I mean, uh, the E files open, and then uh, um, if you take back that with the bishop, fatal. you're attacking on B one. You're attacking on E two. It's really uh, really dangerous. Um, so f takes g4, trying to keep things a little bit more closed. And, um, and here actually after f takes e4, um, alpha zero gives itself a 71.9% expected score. So it really thinks it's got an excellent position. Um, I guess, you know, that the white kingside pawns are ruined. Um, this a8 h1 diagonal, it's now within black's power to open it up and put, um, um, a diagonal piece on there. So very dangerous. But yeah, I mean, it's not really clear how, um, um, now, how, how Black's going to make something of this, but the, the next regroupings that Alpha Zero does are, are amazing, really incredible. So, Rook F1, Queen G5. So, Black's not afraid of um, swapping queens here because the uh, resulting position, then the bishop pair is going to be still really, really strong. Yeah, and I mean, the, the white queen is really the um, uh, white's most active piece. So, Alpha Zero loves to exchange off the opponent's most active piece, leaves them with the most passive pieces. But as we'll see, you know, Alpha Zero isn't just going to take on F4 because that would repair White's kingside pawn structure. So it comes up with this lovely idea of Bishop E7. Yeah, I mean, that Bishop on A3 wasn't doing that much uh, anymore. So this Bishop now is coming to G5 and that's going to force White to play Queen takes E5. And so you get the exchange of uh, Queens, but without having um, repaired White's pawn structure. And that king is still really confined in the box, because if that bishop can come round to e3 or something, then, then the king's still stuck. Exactly. I mean, that king, that white king, uh, it's off h1, but it's 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 not getting anywhere to safety yet. Um, and, yeah, you know, white's got to be a little bit careful with that knight. I mean, if it brings it back to b2 into activity, then a bishop c5 check could come in. So rook c1, and now this is the second part of alpha zero's regrouping, a really amazing one. Um, so the bishop comes to d5, and rook d1, Stockfish is just waiting, you know, hoping to ride out the storm. And now this move e3. And this has got a very, um, a, a very, very interesting point. The idea is after knight b2, bishop g2. And again, the king has no, no squares at all that can move to. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, um, um, you know, it, it can be tough, you know, finding great spots for all your pieces. And here, um, Alpha Zero manages to find a great outpost for, for its light squared bishop, um, supported by a, by that pawn on h3. On g2, well, it, it attacks f1. It also just completely restricts the white king. And it also, quite beautifully, uh, frees the square on d5 for the black rook. And, well, you know, this D file, that's a big invasion uh, file for uh, for black. So uh, if white's not careful, you're just going to play rook D8 and uh, invade with a rook on the seventh. And it's uh, it's end of the game. And if white takes that rook, then black will take back with the pawn. And then you've got those two central pawns looking very strong. And also a C file to uh, to invade with. So, um, I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, this is a really wonderful uh, maneuver, this um, this bishop G2 and rook D5, you know, really incredible. So, um, so after knight d3, bishop d6, um, this bishop d6, we're going to see there's uh, quite a few threats against the, uh, the white king that emerge from there. Um, so rook e1, a5. Yeah, alpha zero just improving every part of the position. Um, actually it's, um, what alpha zero wants now is to invade with its rook. And so it's, um, it's also giving itself the option of playing a4 and opening a file there, either the a file or the b file, depending how white reacts. So um, Stockfish keeps on waiting a little bit um, and then goes for rook f5. And here Alpha Zero takes the chance to, uh, well, to make another step to improve the position. Bishop comes back to e4. I mean, white can't allow, can't move the knight, otherwise the rook gets into the seventh. Rook d1 and king f6. And black, uh, white here is pretty paralyzed. Um, I think one variation really sums it up quite nicely. I think if you go king f1, there's a, a lovely little tactic here. Black has a nice tactic here with bishop takes g3. Exactly. And suddenly that h-pawn is on the move again. Exactly. It's amazing how often, you know, this h-pawn and h3, which you put there early in the middle game, turns out to have a huge effect in the end game. And here it's just queening and black's winning. And it just has the effect, again, that, you know, white's king got away from h1, it got to g1, but that pawn on h3 still had an influence. It, the king can't go any further to f1. So, I mean, black's just, um, uh, if white stays still, then uh, black's just going to improve the position still further and just win very easily. I mean, alpha zero's uh, expected score is very high here. And so Stockfish, um, well, tries the last little tactic. Um, it actually ends up giving, a piece, giving up a piece in order to get a couple of pawns. Um, looks a little bit scary, but it's all well calculated. Rook e2, rook d3. Rook e6, discovered check, but king takes f5, attacks the rook. Uh, bishop h3, king g5, and uh, well, Stockfish held on for another 20, 25 moves, but uh, Alpha Zero finished this off quite nicely. Well, with um, a rook and two bishops in the mix, it's um, it's going to be pretty uh, pretty impossible for um, for White to defend. So that was that game. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as as we did. I did think it was a really um, stunning game. Um, I think, you know, the opening plan of h5 to h4 to h3, I mean, again, it's another example of where this typical alpha zero plan, um, yeah, opens, uh, you know, some, some fresh, uh, insights into, uh, into a position. And um, what I really liked was the, um, the move queen e7, you know, just nonchalantly giving up that d pawn. And then the exploitation of the, um, of the resulting open files and diagonals together with this move g5, g4 and f5, you know, really throwing the whole kitchen sink at white, um, was a really, uh, a really great thing. And finally those maneuvers, you know, queen g5, queen e5, bishop e7 to g5, bishop d5 to g2, you know, really amazing um, insight into how to really get the maximum out of your pieces, you know, against a, a defender like Stockfish, you know, that uh, that's just, uh, you know, amazing as well. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that game. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and uh, keep tuned for many more videos. We've got many more planned in the coming months. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.